Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you please stand. I present to you the Fuqua School of Business, Master of Management Studies, Duke Quinchon University, Class of 2019. Please be seated. I'm Bill Bolding, and it's my great privilege to be Dean of Duke University's Fuqua School of Business. Every day, in my opinion, today is an extra to celebrate the accomplishment of these soon-to-be graduates sitting in front of us. I very much appreciate the journey that they've taken to get to this moment of celebration. And I very much appreciate that we have friends and family here with us today to share in the celebration because you, too, were a part of this journey. And so it's so nice to have people with us today who were so meaningful to the students in front of me in helping them get to this momentous occasion. And so I'm very grateful for the people here who can join us. And I'm also grateful for the people who are a significant part of this journey but could not join us today. Two, I'm glad to recognize the faculty and staff who were so meaningful in your journey, both on the Duke University campus and on the Duke Quinshan University campus because they too played such an important role in getting us to this special day. And so having said all that, I want to be sure that everyone understands that it's the students who are the star of the show today. They're the ones who we are celebrating. And with that, I'd like to introduce Dennis Simon, the Vice Chancellor of Duke Quinchon University. Well, thank you, Bill. I usually don't agree, uh, disagree with uh, the dean, but uh, I also have to say that uh, in addition to our graduates, there are also some other stars in this audience, and that's the families, uh, friends, and parents of the graduates who, without their support and without their love and their caring, uh, many of you would uh, not be here today. So maybe we can just take a moment and give some applause to the families and parents who are here today. <laughs> 
it's always exciting uh, to come to a graduation, and this one is no different. Uh, and in fact, it's a very special one. Um, the, the present state of affairs between the United States and China, for example, right now is going through some very difficult times. And uh, our president, uh, Vincent Price, was here a couple weeks ago, and he described uh, Duke Kunshan University as what he said, a beacon of light in the midst of the turbulence of U.S.-China relations. And so you are at a very special place. Uh, this is a place where two countries who are big and powerful and important come together and will probably define and shape the world as we know it uh, for the next 50 to 100 years to come. And as part of that experience, uh, you bring with you a responsibility. People who come through Duke Quinchon University are expected to be bridge builders, people basically who work to unite and create constructive engagement among the peoples of not only the two countries, but also for people around the world. We hope that uh, with this experience and the tools that you've learned and the uh, knowledge that you've garnered from your learning here on this campus and at the Duke, on the Duke campus, that you will play a purposeful role and a meaningful role in helping to create a better world uh, in the coming years. Our experience has taught us that the uh, bonds of friendship that you make with one another and the relationships that you've established with your professors are part of a lifelong relationship that you will always have, both with Duke University and also Duke Quinchon University. And we are really thrilled to know that you have now become long-term members of our family. We may be a young institution at this point, but we really have a rich alumni already out there, and we hope to continue to build upon that alumni in the future. So let me, on behalf of Chancellor Feng Yomei and myself, uh, extend to you again our sincere congratulations and wish you much success as you leave here uh, in the coming years. Thank you all very much. I'd now like to ask uh, Ranak Singh to step forward. Uh, he is a student representative from the class of 2019, and he will make the presentation of the Excellence in Teaching Award. Thank you, Dean Bolding. Good evening, friends, faculty, staff, and of course, the spectacular class of 2019. Interacting with all of you over the past 10 months, I realized that we come from different walks of lives. We have different experiences, and we come from different places. However, what unites us is a common goal, a common goal of educating ourselves, a common goal of being passionate about learning stuff. The most important facilitators of this goal are the teachers who impart, who impart wisdom not only inside the classroom, but outside of it as well. The Excellence in Teaching Award is awarded to a faculty member based on quality of teaching, approachability and availability, continuous improvement, degree of challenge created for students, and use of innovation in teaching a core course. And while we all agree that we've had the privilege of having many such teachers in our class and being taught by them, someone who stands out is one of my personal favorites. He, amongst other things, taught us three most important things that will go on throughout with us in our entire life. The three things were, to treat people with respect, to always tell the truth, and importantly, to hold dear our core beliefs, especially when we are in difficult circumstances. What was even more remarkable was that he told us to save all our tears only for the final exams. <laughs> Without further ado, I would now like to present, on behalf of MMS DKU 2019, the Excellence in Teaching Award to Professor Hao Shui.
Thank you. Unfortunately, Professor Shea could not be here today, and I will accept the award on his behalf. I am honored to receive the award on behalf of Professor Hao Shi. Professor Hao shared the following. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you so much for your acknowledgement. It is a great honor. Teaching at DKU was an enjoyable experience. From the very first day, I was impressed by your brightness your eagerness to learn, and your level of engagement. Your commitment and hard work also motivated me to work hard so that I would not let you down. You were enthusiastic over the entire two weeks, which is quite something given how intense the course was and the fact that lectures often ran over time. Thank you for being patient when lectures ran over. I enjoyed interacting with you both inside and outside the classroom. One of my most memorable moments was chatting with you during class breaks and over lunch. Although the food in the cafeteria has some room for improvement. <laughs> It was great to be part of your learning process, and more importantly, to get to know you more. I felt so connected to you by the end of the second week that I wished the course could go on for a few extra days, you know, so that you could have more questions to answer on the final exam. <laughs> this was my first year at Duke, and the award means a lot to me. I suggest that we all thank the two FOB sessions because I had the chance to experiment with teaching there before I could improve it at DKU. I would also like to thank Anne and Dee for their help and dedicated work that made the transition from Durham to DKU seamless. Allow me to finish by thanking each MMS DKU student for making teaching so enjoyable and for making me feel so welcome. It was my privilege to be your professor. I wish you best of luck in your future career. Thank you. In the spirit of giving and continuous improvement, I'd like to welcome to the stage those individuals whose work this year will help DKU to continue to grow. Please welcome the class gift committee members Cheng Mingju and Ying Tao Ju. We would like to present this check to DKU Executive Vice Chancellor Dennis Samuel to show our support for Duke Quinshan University. This gift will help support the funding priorities of the university and MS program to pave the way forward for future students. And this was a great year. We raised the total amount on RMB 5,000. 112 with a participation rate of 100 percent. <laughs> Class of 2019, you did a really good job. Thank you for your support and participation. Thank you. <laughs>
I would now like to introduce the student speaker, someone who has exemplified our core values and represents our class proudly. What he represents even more proudly is the great state of Texas. My dear friend, Luke Walker. Thanks, Ronick, for that uh, all-too-kind introduction. Unfortunately, I don't get to talk about Texas much today, uh, but I guess this will do. Uh, and quite honestly, there are a lot of reasons why we're here today. There are a lot of people to thank. And I think it's, it's worthwhile to go through and mention uh, a few. Uh, first is uh, Dean Boulding. Thank you so much for traveling halfway around the world from, from Durham to Kunshan to be with us here today. Uh, it means a lot, and, and uh, it's been an honor to learn under your graceful leadership, uh, one that, that, that's inclusive, uh, one that defines, that defines itself as a culture of excellence. Uh, really, really happy to be a part of it. Uh, next is Executive Vice Chancellor Dennis Simon. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. As you mentioned, DKU is a cutting-edge university. It's on the, uh, on the cusp of, uh, of, of a new era of education, uh, one that is uh, a light in the darkness of U.S.-China relations, if you will. Um, it's been a lot of fun learning here for the last five months, and we're lucky to have you at the helm. Uh, next is our commencement speaker, Mr. Jeffrey Lee. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Uh, you are the embodiment of what it means to be a FUCO graduate, to carry on the torch of, of excellence. Uh, it's motivating and it's inspiring for all of us here to, uh, to continue doing the same uh, once we step out of these halls. Uh, and also, a million thank yous to the faculty and the staff who, who made this year possible. Uh, Ten months ago, we came in like deer in the headlights. We had no idea what was going on. Uh, and all of this is possible because of you. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. A million thank yous. Uh, and lastly, yeah, yeah. And lastly, to all of the families that are here, both those that are in Kunshan and uh, th those who are not in Kunshan, uh, your love and support is, is constant and it is reliable. Uh, we would not be where we are today without you, so, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And now to the class of 2019. You did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You did it. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, a jam-packed 10-month course split between two continents. You have all the reason to be extremely proud of yourself. As I was sitting there listening to Ronick, I only had one question. Why are you so excellent? <laughs> <laughs> you know, 10 months ago, we arrived in Durham last July from different corners of the globe. We had a strong desire to learn and together an unwillful ignorance of how quickly time would pass us by. Over the course of six months while we were in Durham, we took classes in accounting, statistics, business communication, strategy, marketing, finance, economics, management and organizations. We made great memories at Piusha's apartment. <laughs> we watched uh, Zion Williamson and the Duke men's basketball team play historic ball in Cameron. We even got to sing karaoke with their accounting professor, Yofei. <laughs> we wrapped up our time in Durham and made our way across the world to Kunshan. Some of us returning home, others coming to visit. Again, we, we took classes in decision making, operations, accounting, business communications, and again, finance. <laughs> we made great memories at Formal in Shanghai, at the class barbecue a few weeks ago, and again, in Piyush's apartment. <laughs> and I, I always think, by the way, class, are you with me? You know, I, one of the best memories. And so in the classroom, we learned a lot. Because of our time there, we can dive deep into free cash flow analysis. We can run Monte Carlo simulations and conduct a five forces analysis. Well, actually, maybe we can't do those things, but at least we know what they are now. Uh, so, so we're starting somewhere, right? Yeah. And, and as much as we learn in the classroom, we learn from one another. Because of the relationships we formed here, we are, are better uh, listeners, we are better leaders, we are better people. So the question is, what have we equipped ourselves for over the last 10 months? 
as uh, Executive Vice Chancellor Simon mentioned, our world is made up of remarkably complex problems. We have things like uh, wealth inequality, noted through uh, food insecurities and, and access to education and health care. There are environmental issues we need to, to deal with, things like ocean conservation and pollution. Social issues like the gender wealth, pay, uh, gender uh, gender pay gap, and uh, humanitarian crises around the world. Coupled with this is an era defined by increasing isolation, where leaders are not so interested in working with one another. And so, in all of this, I would argue that over the last ten months, we've equipped ourselves to be problem solvers. In other words, we've equipped ourselves to be good stewards of the fortune we've built up for ourselves here at, at DKU and a few core. Fortunately, I think all of us feel that way, which is why I am so hopeful about the future. Our class and classes like it will redefine the metrics of success. We're not so concerned with making as much money as we can, and we're more concerned with leaving the world a little bit better than we found it. So to the class of 2019, I hope you haven't lost your strong desire to learn, your love for learning, and I hope you've gained a greater appreciation for, for life's most fleeting resource, time. And go get them. Those problems I mentioned, go get them. And always fight the good fight. It will always be worth it. The future will certainly have its challenges, but I say to the future that you have not met us yet. And remember, if you are ever in the great state of Texas, <laughs> my home, in the most beautiful place on the planet, you always have a place to stay. Thanks. Thank you so much, Luke, for the, your, your deeply insightful and, and moving remarks. They're really terrific. It now is my great privilege to introduce our commencement speaker. And when we choose a speaker for graduation, it's a very, very high bar that that person has to pass over. First of all, we want someone who will be seen as a role model, as someone of accomplishment, someone you can look up to and say, wow, someday I'd like to have success like that individual. So when we look at our graduation speaker, Jeffrey Lee is one of the most important leaders in one of the most important companies in China. Uh, he is a, the managing partner of Tencent Investment and general manager of mergers and acquisitions for Tencent. His responsibilities include investments across a wide variety of sectors, from education to healthcare, uh, and he leads the Tencent global investment activity in interactive entertainment, focusing on gaming companies in China and across the world. Before joining Tencent, Jeffrey was very successful in his roles at Bertelsmann Asia Investment, Google, and Nokia. And so he certainly checks the box in terms of someone of accomplishment. But accomplishment means very little if it's not accompanied by great wisdom. And here, I can personally vouch for the wisdom that Jeffrey has acquired throughout his career. He serves on our East Asia Regional Advisory Board, and I've personally benefited from his wisdom over many years in terms of his role with the East Asia Advisory Board. He is someone who is deeply respected, who often is sought after as an expert in terms of market activity, in China, around the world, in the tech sector, in every sector, because he is someone who has had to make himself aware of the emerging trends across every, uh, every industry sector. So he's someone who has accumulated a great deal of wisdom. But again, the wisdom means very little if we can't meet the standard that Luke talked about, which is to be someone of high quality, high values, and real purpose. And here, it is an extraordinary thing to see just how humble Jeffrey is, given his level of accomplishment. He's someone who is humble. He's someone who is generous. And in fact, I'd like to mention that thank you for your, your class gift uh, to DKU. 
Jeffrey will match that class gift. And that's just something that he is doing simply because he is a very, very generous individual, generous in every sense of the word, because he gives his time to countless students who seek his advice. He gives his, his counsel. Um, and so he's someone who is very, very generous in sharing all the gifts that he has to offer. And so he's someone who exhibits the values that we would hope to see in any person in the Fuqua community. The last thing is that we hope to have someone who is from the Fuqua community so that you can see that from this community, great leaders emerge. And I'm very happy to say that Jeffrey is, at least we are proud that Jeffrey is a Fuqua graduate. And so without further ado, I give you Jeffrey Lee. Thank you very much for Dean Bolding's Ken introduction. And uh, thank you, Chancellor Simon, all the guests, all the faculty. And most important of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, class 2019, for having me here. I know there's like a great moment for you. And congratulations for your great work in the, in the past year. Thank you. Uh, I actually heard a lot about you guys during this afternoon, and Luke's comments actually remind me many, you know, familiar names. You know, when I was at Fuqua, that was about 15 years ago, uh, especially the accounting corporate finance class. You know, I still remember vividly uh, about what happened in, in my year. And to be very honest, when Dean Broding first reached me uh, and why me as a comment speaker, I was quite nervous. I'm still quite nervous today. <laughs> um, not only because I know there's like a great commitment and great expectation uh, from the students and family, but also, uh, you know, uh, last year actually was a very uh, struggling year, tough year for my company, for myself. I will talk a little bit later uh, about why is that. But uh, today, you know, after coming here, especially heard of Luke's uh, comments, I, I finally realized, you know, uh, probably the real reason of you know, Dean voting to invite me here is that uh, to give you a very uh, real demo that even you did really poorly at your corporate finance and accounting class, you can still find a very good job at the investment field. <laughs> so uh, I, I remember last year, uh, uh, DKU invited Tom Zhu as a, as a comment speaker. And uh, Tom uh, was a very, very uh, great uh, entrepreneur, but he has very special talents. Uh, you know, uh, he, he was a dropout from university. He was a serious entrepreneur, and he worked uh, for Tesla as a general manager uh, in China. So my path actually was very different from him. Uh, I'm actually uh, kind of like a good boy in terms of like the traditional definition in, in, the, in the Chinese education system. So I, I grew up here. I went to Beida for college. And uh, uh, after graduation, I, I think very similar with many of you are sitting here. I have no idea about what I'm going to do, you know, uh, as my first job. So I went to uh, Procter & Gamble uh, as my first job. I worked there four years, uh, three years in sales and one year in marketing. And the great learning from Procter & Gamble is that, you know, I, I realized I'm not the person for sales and marketing. So I, I went to uh, for, for the for the for the change. I went to Fuqua in summer of 2002. Uh, probably uh, you can still remember that's about like uh, only one year after the uh, September 11 attack. And also that's the middle of uh, the internet bubble. So many of my peers end up with like uh, no internship, uh, no uh, final offer. Uh, but we actually spent lots of time together, so I made uh, many, you know, uh, lifetime, you know, good friends over there. That's actually a very special gift for my for my uh, life learning experience. Uh, but luckily, I, I finally found a job. So I, I went Nokia uh, after graduation. I, I spent one year in UK and come back two years uh, in China. And then um, I, I went to Google. Uh, I have done uh, several different uh, product development, corporate development job in both firms. 
And uh, then in 2008, uh, right before you know, Google exited China, uh, that's nothing to do with me, and uh, um, I, I moved again. I, I moved to uh, the investment field and helped the German conglomerate Bertelsmann to set up the funding in China. And another two years later, uh, I started my journey with Tencent. So uh, currently, I'm serving as a managing partner of Tencent Investment. Uh, the team was set up in 2008, and uh, I was the first, uh, uh, sorry, I was the number fifth mem member of that team. Uh, currently, we already have over 60 professional investment professionals, and we deploy about 10 billion US dollars each year in the past several years uh, with a portfolio company over 700. Uh, you know, this is very, uh, exciting experience, you know, uh, in, in, the, in the past several years uh, when you have such a great, you know, change in terms of like the, uh, what we have done in, in the past. But to be honest, uh, the most exciting part actually from my working experience is that, you know, I have the chance to, to know uh, many of like the very exceptional uh, entrepreneurs, CEOs uh, early on, and also observe their growth, you know, uh, during the process, so um, I, I I know uh, today the graduation ceremony probably that's also the beginning of the class 2019 your your career path. So I I I, I guess is that many of you are expecting me to talk about you know how to be successful in in your long term journey. Uh, uh, I, I probably will fail you uh, because I really want to set myself free from that expectation, and I also want to set all the class, you know, uh, from that expectation uh, from your parents, uh, from your couples, and most important, uh, from yourself about you know um, what's actually uh, to be success. Uh, on, on the other hand, I, I really want to talk about you know uh, the the other word, which is like a failure. Uh, my, if I may, my first advice to you is that uh, at this age uh, of your career, you should definitely uh, get out of your comfort zone and try something different, take some risk, and uh, probably uh, try the experience of a failure. Uh, since like a failure is actually inevitable in your, in your lifetime, so if that's going to happen, so let it happen early, and uh, letting it happen uh, fast. People all love to, uh, you know, talk about like, uh, the successful stories because that's uh, enlightening, that's inspiring, inspirational, and that's uh, very unique. Uh, and but on the other side, you know, when you when you talk about failure, that's all like about feature stories, that all like the the sad, and that's all about like uh, you know how you hide from things away. Um, but actually, that's how, how life goes and how people like, grow out of that. So as an investor, I often you know, ask about the uh, failure experience of the entrepreneurs, and that, that's actually a great demo of the learning capability of the people and also it's like a self-reflection. So uh, here, I actually want to share with you about a very uh, painful, sad experience about myself. Uh, so. As I mentioned early in my career, I realized you know uh, sales marketing was not for me, and I'm quite a logical people. I like the intellectual challenge in a small uh, team environment. So it seems like the consulting is a is a very nice fit for me. So I start preparing for the case study. I start to improve my English. And I start to set up all the connections. So during the two years at Fuqua, I interviewed almost every office of every consulting firms in the United States. Um, Deloitte Atlantic, uh, McKinsey New York, BCG Boston, Monitor Chicago, and I all failed. Uh, I still remember very vividly bef before the graduation, I interviewed with McKinsey uh, for about 11 or 12 rounds with four of their global office, and finally I ended up with a China partner with like, I have no chemistry at all. The, 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 the moment I step into office that I, I, I know I'm doomed. So uh, <laughs> even even after joining like Nokia, the year after you know I interviewed many firms in their London office. Then after come back to Beijing, I interviewed with 
many of them in their Beijing office. So that's almost like a journey of four years. I, I failed them all. So I, I, I didn't remember why I was so upset about consulting and you know, what actually drives me, you know, keep trying, keep trying, and keep trying. Uh, after like the, all these years, 15 years, uh, you know, working experience, so I, I have to say, like my current past, uh, especially my experience with Nokia and Google, gave me like a tremendous exposure to the early, you know, innovation of China mobile internet, which by far the most innovative global trend. Uh, you know, that that's like a great, great experience. And also, you know, uh, I also get like a, uh, almost like a paid gap year when I work for Nokia UK. I, I drove around UK. Went to lots of like interesting places. Many like a UK resident have never been, even they have lived there for years. Uh, but most of all, you know, the remember what I remember is, you know, what I learned from this process. Uh, the first thing I learned is like how to prepare. You know, how to prepare for interview, how to prepare for the test, how to prepare, and many times even over prepare for like a small chance, small opportunities you have in your life. Because back in like 2002, 2004, even to get like a job interview is extremely, extremely difficult. The second thing I learned actually how to motivate myself and to take a very proactive attitude in, in that process. And last thing is that how to make peace with myself when the bad news comes. Uh, so having said that, I, I still have to admit, you know, the process actually that's really, really painful. So uh, even till now, I, I still hate like McKinsey a lot. So I'm becoming like, a very <laughs> picky, you know, client uh, with them f when I do like a project with them now. Uh, so if you look at my daily job, so uh, the the essence of like the the the, the about investment actually is about like a risk taking. So uh, if when we look at the a venture fund, if like uh, you have never failed in your projects along your fund, normally uh, that's highly likely you are not taking like enough risk. And same for the like, individual growth. So early uh, stage uh, as you in your career, uh, beginning of your career, the most important thing is that you know uh, the biggest like uh, the the biggest risk you are going to take is actually to uh, let the risk go away. So uh, to missing a big, a big trend actually is more important or more dangerous than like making very, very small, uh, many like small mistakes. Uh, so don't get stuck in the prototype or expectation uh, from others, from yourself, as kind of like a successful model or successful individual. But get, go ahead and try to do something like a different. So if you look at uh, yourself and you know imagine what you will be in in, in terms of like the ten years from now, I hope that that's not like a so clear picture because that's actually the space you want to grow into. So uh, if you know exactly what you will be like, you know. Along the way, you'd better, you know, uh, make some change and take a proactive approach. Otherwise, you will either get bored, or you know, along the way, you will be abandoned from like this, this huge, huge wave. And the very difference of your age versus my age is the diversity of opportunities. The people talking about, even people talking about stabilized uh, social status. And also how hard to like start up again, but I still you know uh, observe many of like great startups in the in the past several years. For example, uh, I observed like a DD grow up from a fourteen people company into like a five to f fifty five billion market cap giant in only four and a half years. Uh, I still remember the first time I met like a Chen Wei. The, he's like a much more less presentable than most of you. Uh, in that process. So uh, the choice you have today actually is very different from what I have at that time uh, to work for certain company. Are you going to like uh, choose a job in finance or accounting? Uh, no, that, that, that's very different. So what you are choosing actually, that's what kind of people you want to be and what kind of lifestyle you are, you are, you are going to take. So you probably can go to corporate, and you probably can go to a f small firm. You probably can start up your own small business, and also you can 
build a huge business by the support from the venture capitalists. So there are lots of choices actually we have never can dream of, you know, uh, back 10 years, 15 years ago, but now actually you all have the choice. But facing all this choice, the advice from me is that keep focus. Only focus makes you work excellent. So people always talk about, you know, uh, Tencent as a gaming company and how successful you know, we're in this gaming space. But most of you, most of the people don't know that how much dedication from like the senior management in gaming itself. So I, I want to share you some like very interesting facts is that, you know, both our chief strategy officer who used to be the uh, managing director of Goldman Sachs in New York and our gaming VP are both like hardcore gamers. So they play literally every game along the year. Um, I don't know how, how they made it, you know, I, I, I just don't have that much time. Yeah. And uh, our general counsel and our president are actually the top 30 players in Class Royale. I guess many of you play that game. And we end up like buying that company and doing the DD process. The, the CEO of Supercell was really, really surpri surprised by, by the ranking. So he just went to their back end office to check whether they have some like a fraud actions, you know, during their play. Uh, you know, it's like a great experience when you see like the business result actually combined with the dedication of the people, like the personal dedication, personal commitment of this, uh, you know, little uh, time spending activities. So my personal, you know, I, I, I don't play that much game, but I, I invest like uh, almost 20 game companies a year in the past like 10 years. Uh, you know, even I don't play that much game, but I, I know inside about like a gaming company operation and I know very clear about like the top gaming company versus the like, normal gaming company. Uh, so I have seen so many like talents, uh, talented like startups failed in the process of like a di diversification and losing focus. So one of my key responsibility uh, when managing uh, the business investment business of Tencent is that try to define the scope of our of business. And in other words, actually to decide what to do and mo more importantly, what not to do. So I can assure you that many opportunities seem like the attractive, but only the people with like the deepest understanding of that area actually get the final, final value. At the same time, actually, focus is also a foundation of the teamwork. So why Team Fuqua is so powerful? Because there's always people know something that you don't know. And the best way to leverage such uh, complementary uh, constructive like the relationship is that you can do your things first really, really well because the folks of people only work with other folks of people. The last thing I may want to share with you is a little bit uh, different is that I hope you could be sincere, uh, not only to like the people around you, but also to yourself. It is not about the absolute truth or not. So as an investor, I've, I have seen like the people speaking untruthfully in front of me every day. I, I, I never blame them because, you know, uh, they're like a huge, tremendous like, uh, responsibility for a company CEO to raise fund uh, for their company, uh, to inspire their people uh, for action execution. And many times they have to like paint lots of pictures for, for, for their friends, for their partners, even for like family members to get the support. So it's definitely not easy. But many times the question is that, you know, whether they can be sincere to themselves. So when they let along, whether they can really, really know what's, ha what's actually happening and what's, whether they have like a real answer to the real questions. So life is a process of reflection. So when you take the risk and reach out to your comfort zone, where often you feel is uncomfortable. And when you focus and deepen your knowledge, you realize actually how much less you know and how much more you need to know. So it's very nature for people to hide from those like the challenges and to try to, you know, cover those like a feeling of like a nervous, the feeling of like a, a pressure with like optimized imaginations. So that's the nature of like a human being. But is that going to work? Probably in the short term, but not in the long run. So 
I, I do know some people. I do know some like the very high quality like a CEO startup uh, entrepreneurs. They can analyze themselves and also the company just like as third, as like a third party person. You know about the team, about the strategy, about the competition. Go to bed, and very oftenly that's followed by very concrete concrete goal and also the execution plan. Uh, many of these questions actually have no yes or no answers and take them years to test and to prove. What I'm asking you now actually is, it's not about that because that's just like a too hard for many of us. But what I want you to know is that, you know, no matter how hard it is, it's always an alternative. You, you can be sincere to yourself. And I know that process. I, I can guarantee you that process actually that's quite painful. That's normally pretty long and also lonely. And many times that's filled with like a sense of a fear, doubt, and weakness. But I can also ensure you that you don't have to be afraid of that because many people actually have the same feeling, have the same experience. And once you go through that experience, actually you'll be, become like a real confident and strong. So 15 years ago, uh, the commencement speaker on my graduation ceremony uh, was Bill Gross. I'm not sure that whether you are familiar with him. He's like the king of the bond. But that changed quite a lot. Uh, I still remember his remark as, uh, you will have to work harder, longer, with lower pay. And you know how hard the, the year was. I do hope that I can give you like a simple sentence like that and you can remember uh, you know, for years. But I, I just couldn't because the world is, is total change. The world actually is more complicated like the 10 years ago than 15 years ago. And I, I, I can assure you that it's going to like be more complicated with all the uh, all the different dynamics happening around us and on the other side of the ocean. Uh, even though we, we have seen that there are like a trillion dollar market cap company come out in US and soon in China with like a drive of technology, information technology, but also uh, we already can see that you know, uh, the US and China dispute will uh, make this global market segregation even more complicated. And even though we have seen lots of like a, uh, advanced technology, uh, people talking about like AI, about like a robotic, you know, how much they can change our world, how much they can reshape, reshape our uh, labor uh, environment, and how many work will be replaced by those new technologies. But are we really ready for the future, kind of a creative dreaming, new world, new society, and new labor force? And also, same time, you know, even like the bioscience could ex significantly extend our life cycle. You know, everyone can do like can live for like 100 years, 150 years. But you know, we are also facing the more challenging environment uh, issues uh, about the really limited resource on Earth. So I I have to tell you that the peop the world, the people, the environment around us actually become more complicated. But it's very important for you to be brave, to be brutally optimistic about the future, and to be sincere to yourself. Actually, that's the only way you can fight through all these uh, complicated situations in, in the future, in, in your world, in your career, and most important, in your life. So I have to say that the, the FUCA year, actually, that's like a very meaningful experience in my year, and I, I, I do glad that you made the same decision as I do. And I also hope that uh, the experience, what you learned here as a skill set and uh, also like the friends you made here also help you and accompany with you uh, in, the, in the coming years. And do wish you all have a very successful career in the, in the future. Thank you, thank you very much. So Jeffrey, uh, I too remember your graduation speaker. It was the most depressing graduation speech I've ever heard in my life. 
In contrast, your talk was full of humor, full of wisdom, full of honesty and authenticity. I am so sorry about McKinsey, <laughs> but I don't think you'd trade that at all for the experiences that you've had, where you've lived a, an, incredible, uh, an incredible life of both success and significance. And I'm so grateful that you've spent the time to talk to the soon-to-be graduates. Um, you exemplify what we consider to be our highest level of leadership, which is to be a leader of consequence. And so I told Jeffrey that I might give him a gift depending on the quality of his speech. Could you please come forward and take this gift? And now we will transition to the recognition of the graduates. And so I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Shui Wong to please step forward. At this time, we would like to acknowledge a number of today's graduates. First, for each graduating class, we recognize the top 10% of the class for their academic achievement. These students are designated as FUQA scholars and are noted in your program. I will read the names of FUQA scholars alphabetically, and I will ask that as I read each name, that person stands in his or her place. I will also ask the audience to wait until I have read all the names before indicating their support and congratulations. The Master of Management Studies, Duke Quinshan University, Class of 2019, FUQA scholars are Ala Fate Abu Lati, Li Xiaolin, Li Zheren, Lu Tong, Christian Saolin, San Pietro, Xu Jiayi, Yin Shi Hua. Please join me in congratulating the FUQA scholars on their outstanding achievement. Thank you. Second, the students in the graduating class nominate and select a student for the Distinguished Service Award based on the contribution of service to the FUQA and DKU community. I would like to ask Luke Worker to stand up. Luke Worker was elected the class president when the program started at Fuqua. Over the last 10 months, Luke initiated and organized different events and projects to bring the class together and help shape the MMS GKU class of 2019 experience. Thank you, Luke, for your service and contribution. This award is also noted in your program. Please join me in congratulating Luke for his outstanding service. Thank you. Now it's time to individually recognize each of our graduates. Today we want each of our graduates to come forward to, re to be recognized and congratulated by Dean Bowding, DKU Executive Vice Chancellor Dennis Simon, and our commencement speaker, Jeffrey Lee. Would you please stand and step forward to congratulate our students? At this time, I would like to ask Anne Lee, Associate Director of the MMS Duke Kunshan Program, to come forward and read the names of our graduating students. She will be joined by Alistair Erickson Dugway, Assistant Director of the Master of Qu Quantitative Ma Management Program at Fuqua, and Di Lu, Senior Specialist of the MMS Duke Kunshan Program. Tang Ge. Push Argawal. J. 
Chen Ming Chu. Chu Yin Tao. Manak Singh. Luke Walker. Alafatu Apolite. Bai Young. Ye Su Pang. Chen Jia Yi. Chen Yang Jing. Chen Liang Yu. Chen Yun Xiang. Jing Chu Yu. Feng Hui Yen. Vivian Unhui Ferguson. James Foster. Jingyi Kuo Xingcheng Hu Yandong Hu Jingru Huang Zhengkai Huan Ling Han Ji Ya Xing Jiang Bing Jie Li Duan Li Xiao Ling Li Zheren Liu Xuanzi Lu Cong Luo Xiaowo Meng Cheng Chao Ning Jing Chiu Ke Yun Kristen Kelly San Pedro Sheng Ke Tu Zhijie Wang Daiqi Wang Xueran Wen Lu Fei Xu Di Xuke Xuan 
徐佳怡。影诗画，于尚鹏，于淼，詹辉宏，张杰。张思琪，钟孝南，周琦，周紫薇。朱静元，庄之琳Could I ask that all the students please rise? Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the graduates of the MMS DKU class of 2019. So I'd like the students to remain standing just for a few minutes while I speak to you directly. Before I do so, again, many, many thanks to those of you who could join us today. Thanks to the people who supported you who could not be with us. Thanks to the faculty and staff. Many, many thanks to our wonderful graduation speaker. Uh, but let me take a few minutes to give you my final words. So the first thing is I want to thank you. So Luke gave you a, a kind of small task, which was leave the world a little bit better <laughs> than when you got there. And I want to thank you because in some sense that is what leadership is all about. It's making sure that when you leave a place that you leave it in better shape than when you arrived. And I'm very, very grateful that your class took that responsibility very seriously and that yes, you did leave the MMS DKU program in better shape than when you arrived, that you took very seriously your responsibility to make sure that those people who follow you would have something even more spectacular than what you've experienced. So I'm very, very grateful that you took that, uh, you took that responsibility so seriously. Having thanked you, I'd like to make some requests of you. And it's not to ask for more money, that will, that will surely come later. <laughs> but the, the first thing is that right now, I'm sure that all of you are thinking about the reality that all of you will move to different places in the world shortly after graduation ends. And so you're going to be really focused on soaking up every last minute of being with your classmates. But please, don't forget those people who got you here. Please show appreciation to the people who made this day possible. And so thank those people who got you here, thank them often, thank them deeply, and make sure that you don't forget that. The second thing is that you are in a very interesting position. You've lived in two places during your, your program. You've lived at Duke, you've lived at DKU. 
And my request of you is to stay connected to both of those places. It's really important as you think about your own experience, what it means to have people give back to you and how your experience was changed because people came back like Jeffrey to share their experiences with you and to enrich the program that you could experience. So please stay connected. I know you take very seriously the responsibility of making the program better for the people that follow you, but please continue to embrace that responsibility as you've now transitioned into alumni hood. And there are both rights and responsibilities that come with being an alumni of Duke University and Duke Quinchon University. The third thing is, I'm going to contradict myself a little bit here, but please don't forget about each other. And you probably are thinking to yourselves, well, that's, that's silly. Of course we won't forget about each other. You know, we love each other. We've gone through an incredible bonding experience together over this, th this past year. You've lived in, in different countries, different continents, and you've had to deal with finance and accounting. But here's the reality of life, which is once you leave this place and you distribute to back to the four corners of the world, life will come at you fast. And you'll have your hands full with whatever is kind of present in your lives. And it will be very, very easy to forget the people who are standing by your side right now. It takes work to sustain relationships. If you work on sustaining these relationships, these are relationships that will have meaning for you over the course of your entire life. But please make sure you put in that work and don't let these bonds dissipate that you've worked so hard to create. And the last request is much like what both Luke asks of you and what Executive uh, Vice Chancellor Simon also mentioned, which is you're in a unique position. You're in a position where you have bridged two worlds. And this is a responsibility then at a moment in time when those two worlds have a hard time finding bridges to connect in positive ways. You are our hope. You are our future in making sure that two great countries and countries beyond the US and China represented in your community continue to connect in positive ways. And so what I wish for all of you is that you live up to what you've experienced during your program, which is to continue to be that bridge, to be, continue to be the source of optimism and hope as we look forward. And finally, just like our graduation speaker, what I wish for all of you is a life of both success and significance, and above all, to be consequential. Thank you very much. May I ask everyone uh, please to remain seated. Um, and uh, this concludes the uh, graduation ceremony. Uh, we all welcome you uh, outside. There will be a reception and uh, a dinner, and uh, you're all cordially invited to attend. Um, and now we will begin the uh, proceedings where our faculty will first depart, then our students, and then our guests in the audience. So again, thank you all very much for coming. And on behalf of Chancellor Fung and myself, I want to congratulate again the class of 2019 MMS program. Congratulations. Congratulations.